Meet Imagawa Hayao, almost 30 years old and the not so proud owner of boy berries that are still perfectly intact. And that's why he is currently in a dark room staring at his beloved Momoko chan's butwalks. Now, she may be a doll, but she can fulfill his dreams. Tonight, before the clock strikes 12, Imagawa's life will change. He's so eager to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, this doll that he doesn't notice the unclad man watching him. If you do it with a Dutch wife, you're not losing your V-card. The stranger whispers to him. Imagawa screams in sheer terror, but in return, the intruder goes super cyan mode and shouts, Go God Board! Suddenly, Momoko lights up. Will she become a real girl? Nope, she turns into a, a board. Yeah. A, a God Board! The intruder, Daigoro, will grant Imagawa the knowledge of a god. Instead of using it to bring about world peace or the next rapture, Daigoro wants the girlfriendless man to learn about the important positions when doing it. First off, matching rhythms is important. Rear entries on an inexperienced woman is foolish, while doing a man on board to an experienced woman is plain vanilla. However, the beginning and end of every act should always be in missionaries. Yes, the ones promoting Christianity because y'all need Jesus. Imagawa yeets the stranger out of his house, calling him a perv. <laughs> but how impolite of him to call Daigoro a perv. Once again, he repeats, I'm a uh, god. Meanwhile, Imagawa sulking in his tub, confused by the turn of events. It's finally your birthday and the party with your Dutch wife was ruined, huh? A voice suddenly says out of nowhere. It's Daigoro again, popping out of the faucet. Poor Imagawa. Instead of leaving him alone, God dives to scrub the lad's dingle birds. After that unconsented cleanup, Daigoro reminds him to wash it properly. But other than that, he notices Imagawa's got a cute size. Imagawa yells at him, wishing he'd be more sensitive about it. Um, okay? Poorly endowed? Daigoro corrects himself, like that's supposed to make him feel better. And so Imagawa kicks him out again. But when he returns to his room, he sees Daigoro finally clothed, sitting on a throne. How many times does he have to remind Imagawa? Imagawa, he's a god. Tired of all this mess, the birthday boy succumbs. What does a god want from him? Daigoro wants to help him eliminate his purity. As that's his duty as an Edo god, all Imagawa needs to do is to listen to him until he moves on to graduation. But the 30-year-old man wants none of it. Goodbye again, Daigoro. The next day, before Imagawa goes to work, he greets the superintendent, the old dorm supervisor. The elder asks him if he's still a cherry boy, and the dismayed man confirms this. Boys are ambitious, the superintendent quips. At work, Hoshi, Imagawa's co-worker, disturbs him by asking, Asking if it's good. You know, dear Momo-chan. He bets Imagawa has enjoyed it and he's even breathing heavily while imagining the experience. Uh oh, Hoshi's turning into a creep. Why are you imagining Imagawa of all people, bruh? Luckily, he gets back to work immediately. In that case, Imagawa's safe to do his job too, but his mouse feels different. Why is it squishy? It took him seconds to realize he was grabbing silicone knockers. He can't take his hands off of it too. Daigoro suddenly appears on his screen to boss him around again. He instructs Imagawa to squeeze those bazookas in two minutes, or they'll explode. Why has this become a matter of life and death? Pressured by Daigoro's nagging, Imagawa finally does as asked. It's now or never. And oh boy, it's so soft. <laughs> So warm. Hence, Imagawa concludes, Tatas are justice! As he drools over them. It hurts! The thing suddenly complains. Daigoro scolds him for doing it wrong, so he shows Imagawa the proper technique to navigate it. After he follows the instructions, the thing finally says that it feels good. Now he can put them in his pie hole. What now? <laughs> no, 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 no. But time's running out. Suddenly, a lost girl approaches Imagawa, to which he instantly screams, I'm busy! The woman's taken aback, especially when she realizes what Imagawa's holding. Before he can make an excuse, the thing 
explodes. Huh? So much for first impressions. That night, Imagawa returns home only to be congratulated by Daigoro, who's on his throne again. Berry Boy has had enough of this. He doesn't want to do horizontal tangos with anyone, anyway. Momo-chan's enough for him. Really? Fine. Daigoro says, wait, that's it? Well, yes. He doesn't want to exert effort on someone who doesn't want to do it. Imagawa didn't expect that response. But Daigoro approaches him and says he'll help him until the day he dies. And the thing is, he can't return to heaven without completing his mission. Imagawa's now conflicted. He can't take this any longer. But then Daigoro speaks again. You hate me, don't you? Imagawa feels guilty and clarifies it isn't like that. Well then, the god proceeds to to the only way he knows best, offering his back door. Come on, don't be shy. He guarantees that it's a five-star experience. Imagawa screams as Daigoro's void vacuums everything in his room. I wanna make love with a girl I love! He shouts as he hangs on by a thread. Hearing that, Daigoro stops. He could have told him sooner. Life begins at 30, they say, but nobody told Imagawa it gets worse. Two minutes before midnight, a random girl on his bed asks Imagawa to remove her chest support. Wait, why does she look so young? Hello, 911? Imagawa tries his best, rummaging in the dark but he's hopeless. The lights switch on, revealing Daigoro, who's disappointed yet again. If Imagawa can't remove a strap, he'll never reach second base. The god wonders if he loves this girl. Love's a heavy word for someone you just met, so Imagawa can't confirm. Then he hates her. Imagawa didn't say that. She could be Imagawa's type if she was more… blessed. Alright, Daigoro carries the girl and pressures Imagawa to hook up with her. Immediately. What the is he deaf or what? Besides, she's so small. Will she be able to take it? More importantly, who the heck is she? Oh, right. Daigoro puts down the girl and takes off her wig. This is my little brother. Little brother? Yep. And his name is Macaron. Aww, hell no. While Imagawa minds his own business, Daigoro invites him to a mixer so he can mingle with girls. But the lad remains uninterested. Annoyed, Daigoro threatens Momo-chan's well-being as a last resort. Macaron approaches Imagawa and shows him a picture of a crucified Momo-chan. The only time she got nailed. If you do as I say, I'll give Momoko back to you. Daigoro says, now resorting to violence. Without a choice, Choice, Imagawa goes to a mixer party. He meets Chimi, a head turner, as in she can easily break her neck. Then there's Mo, who can hide her small head in her fluffy body. And finally, Ryo, with blonde hair and sharp melons. Yeah. The downside, she's ridiculously small and has a unibrow. Uh, is this it? Imagawa can't help but be disappointed. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, little bro. Daigoro notices this, so he gives him the god finger. Imagawa screams in pain while the god reminds him not to judge a book by its cover. If he does that, he'll definitely see their inner beauty. Imagawa tries Daigoro's tip. Lo and behold, they suddenly look gorgeous. But how? The god smirks and calls calls it Kuchi power. For the next lesson, Imagawa must increase the number of people he meets. He's about to break down as days go by without Momoko-chan, so Macaron threatens him again with a photo, forcing him to do as they please. <laughs> Poor thing. They go into a flower arrangement class, but Daigoro and Macaron get the most attention. In yoga class, the brothers stunt everyone with their ultra meditation level Pro Max. Even in cooking school, Daigoro's a chick magnet. All this got Imagawa thinking, what about me. As he's sulking while waiting for a religious meeting to start, a girl asks if she can sit beside him. Turning to see who it is, Imagawa realizes it's the lady from work. Ando also recognizes him. Remembering what happened before, they both apologize to each other. Ando feels sorry for bothering Imagawa when he was in the middle of a product meeting then. Huh? Product meeting? Uh oh, right, right. He was pitching a new product then. <laughs> Yeah. They stare at each other for a brief moment. Then suddenly, they both giggle. And her sweet chuckles make Imagawa's heart beat faster. Whoa. Could this be? Could this possibly be? I met my soulmate! Imagawa excitedly announces. Finally, he got along with a girl after 30 years of being himself. 
Daigoro's unimpressed, yet he wishes him luck. Imagawa sings about fate, confirming the god's speculation he's delusional. He doubts him, so Macaron asks if he's not gonna do anything about it. Hmm, nothing for now. Imagawa deserves to experience heartache, as it'll soon lead to that. The following day, Imagawa stutters to ask Ando something. Pulling out all his courage, he finally says, Become one with me, please! <laughs> oh, nice. His first criminal record. Imagawa suddenly realizes what he just said. Should he take it back? However, it's already too late. Ando has unleashed her stay away, don't come here feel that she learned from self-defense class. With a loud bellow, she begs him not to take her for an idiot. Imagawa's confused, but he knows this is bad. And just like that, he got rejected. Imagawa cries desperately, but Macaron has the solution. Bring the god board. Yes, he can do that too. However, Imagawa is more concerned about why he's wearing a maid costume. But who cares? He's so cute! Today's lesson is about rejection after confession. According to Macaron, when a girl refuses your love, it might be because she doesn't like you. However, there are many ways to make her see a boy as a potential love interest. Hearing that, Imagawa gets all pumped up, ready for his comeback. But in his case, it won't always be a positive reaction, especially after what he's done. At a library, Hoshi introduces himself. He's head of computer maintenance starting today. He asks for the person in charge. However, Wada, the receptionist, just ignores him. Meanwhile, Imagawa hides behind his co-worker, still drowning in his misery. Despite Hoshi's insistence on a decent talk, Wada tells him to back off and shut up. Suddenly, Imagawa sees Ando sitting next to the receptionist. Does she work here? She notices him too until they lock eyes. In a panic, Imagawa runs off leaving a bewildered Hoshi. Imagawa cries at home. He's moving. He's really moving. Ando could have greeted him earlier, but no. It's heartbreaking. Yes, yes. Very sad. Anyway, hearing all that, Daguro suggests getting Ando's email address. Hmm. Does he want him to have a death-before-surrender attitude about Ando? Of course not. The way Daigoro sees it, Imagawa still has a chance with her. So stop complaining and get her email. Otherwise, as per Macaron's evidence, Momoko-chan will be in grave danger. He shall be wary of the god pair. So Imagawa practices asking Ando for her email casually, but everything he says makes him look like a creep. On the other hand, Ando deploys her AK field to any man who tries to approach her. She'll run away from the male species for as long as she can. Meanwhile, Imagawa is still practicing his line. Suddenly, someone answers him. It's Ando. She agrees to exchange emails. Whoa! Mission success! But um, who's gonna tell her that she's in the men's bathroom? As reality sinks in, Ando once again unleashes her AK field. Imagawa might have been yeeted out of the building, but at least he got her email. That night, the superintendent senses something different with Imagawa. The smell of a female is coming from her cell phone, he says, suddenly turning into a rabid monster. Imagawa runs for his life. But Superintendent, the cherry boy hero, wonders if he should protect the lad from women trying to take his V-card. When Imagawa enters his room, Macaron congratulates him while wearing a bear costume. Daguro speculates he has obtained Ando's email, but how does he know? Aha! Uh -huh. It's because he's an omniscient god. Close, but no. He actually planted a god bug on Imagawa. Gotta love technology. God doesn't need bugs, Imagawa says. But because of his arrogance, Daigoro is more determined to eliminate it. Presenting the double god board. Once again, Daigoro emphasizes the importance of missionaries. Amen to that. They also discuss other important details, while Macron warns him not to leave a mark on a woman's body. Alright, Imagawa's ready to try the smooching. Daguro suggests they put it to practice with Macaron and Momoko. Imagawa hesitates, but the little boy assures him he'll do his best, his absolute best. And so, Imagawa agrees. Macaron stares at Momoko, feeling the moment. Suddenly, his bare eyes turn furious. He unleashes his sharp claws and pierces them through Momoko's body. Why, Macaron, why? To his defense, she gave a really scary face. While at the library, Wada inquires if Ando has watched Aizura 2 yet. Ando admits she hasn't, despite enjoying the first one. 
Wada proposes that Anta goes on a movie date with a boy, but she prefers to watch it alone on DVD. Unbeknownst to them, Imagawa is eavesdropping from the computer station. Dagoro and Macaron suddenly appear on his screen. They need to talk, so the god brings Imagawa inside the computer. Daigoro wants to know why he's not making a move, and it's because Imagawa's scared he might get rejected again. Besides, Ando might think he has ulterior motives, which he does. If he reveals them early on, he'll lose his chance forever. Other than that, Imagawa hasn't sent a single email to her. Daigoro can't believe this. Imagawa's such a dum-dum! Macaron calms his brother down. They can't blame Imagawa for his lack of decisiveness as he has spent 30 years of his uneventful life in misery. If he doesn't ask Ando out, Daigoro and Macaron will do it. Wait a minute, I'm the one who wants to ask her out! Imagawa cries. After gathering all his courage, Imagawa finally asks Ando on a date this Sunday. She's quite shy but actually accepts the invitation. Ooh, score! Watching a movie with Ando was a success. According to Daigoro, it's best if Imagawa asks her for dinner afterwards. And so, he asks her to eat at a restaurant. However, Ando excuses herself to go home, leaving a confused Imagawa. Back home, Macaron begs Imagawa to help him beat the boss monster in his game, but the man ignores him. Being rejected twice is enough, don't you think? Daigoro says, Imagawa can just give up. It's basic. How many times does Imagawa have to repeat he's not rejected? She just went home. No big deal. Daigoro speculates Imagawa has said something about the gichi gichi yaya dada, but he assures him he didn't. He followed all the gods' instructions. In that case, Daigoro concludes he's hopeless. Unbeknownst to them, Ando also has a little friend. Meet Pichan, a twin-tailed Edo god. She feels Ando got rejected. That's why she came home early. When will a 30-year-old single lady like her get a chance with a boy again if she keeps this up? Ando clarifies she got nervous, so she left her date. Nervous? Pichan thinks she's an imbecile. How will she get rid of her cherry at this point? Despite Pichan's disapproval, Ando says she wants to take it slow with someone she loves. Twin Tails can't believe it. What does her sister have to say? Kuchan turns to them and says, After you do it, make sure to wring out the rubber. <laughs> Yes, that's an excellent advice. Going back to Ando's date, Pichan asks if she hates him. She shakes her head. Actually, Imagawa's a gentleman. First, he matches her pace while walking. One point. He also walks closest to the road. Ooh, I like that. Right. Keep your woman safe. Two points. When she accidentally bumped into someone, he caught her. Imagawa for three! But the question is, did Ando email him to thank him? She just stares at Pichan blankly, meaning no. Well, she should! Ando types her message saying thanks and how she looks forward to going out with him again. However, Pichan isn't satisfied. She seizes the phone, writes the email, and hits send. By the smug look on her face, her text is definitely inappropriate. Actually, Pichan's message looks decent, except for that splashing emoji. Also, she adds that Ando wants to see another movie. When Imagawa reads it, he gets confused. Because of that, Daguro invites a special guest, Hoshi. He heard Imagawa's problem from his relative. As a good friend, he's willing to help eliminate the V-card that plagued him for 30 years. Hoshi feels God summoned him because of his experience in dating and hooking up with women. Wait, wow, <laughs> this guy is experienced? Daguro vouches for Hoshi. Yes, he has lost his innocence when he was 18 to a gorgeous foreigner, Miss Bulgaria. And because he loved stargazing, Hoshi used that to expand his network of women with similar hobbies. Wow, oh, learn from the pro. Hoshi's here to discuss the pros and cons of rear entry. He knows it so much he can draw it from the stars. His star obsession when he was younger led him to a fantasy and his first encounter with heavenly bodies. Now, if Imagawa happens to meet a woman who's game for it, it'll surely bring him limitless bliss. Daigoro also mentions it gets better if the lady likes it rough. Imagawa can't believe he's hearing this, but the best advice they can give is to know what the girl wants. Indeed. However, Imagawa can't do all that in his first time. Meanwhile, Pichan pulls out her chastity pole and transforms a stuffed penguin into a god board. Today's lecture is about the pros and cons of the yee-haw position, and Pichan demonstrates it using Ando's toys. Childhood ruined. 
Ando has spent 30 years of her life not knowing anything, which is problematic for her Edo god. Whether she likes it or not, she has to learn. However, despite their presentation efforts, Ando can't take any of them. The night of Ando and Imagawa's second date arrives. This time, they went to a restaurant after watching a movie. They chat well, trying to maintain eye contact. When a guy is on a date, it's best to look into the girl's eyes when she's talking. However, they can't keep it for more than 10 seconds because, according to the gods, their date might get awkward. In the end, both enjoy their time together. Before departing, Ando tells Imagawa to invite her again. Feeling confident, he says he wants to be with her more. I love you. Please go out with me, Imagawa blurts out. Ando blushes and falls silent for a moment. Suddenly, she replies, I'm sorry, I can't. And just like that, Ando completely rejects him. Again, poor Imagawa. The five soldiers line up. Sound off. Index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. All together, they're the five digits. With a heavy heart, Imagawa won't be having any action today. They've been training for so long, but without an enemy, there's no fight. They cry out the story of their excellency getting rejected. It could have been their first battle, but no. Imagawa grieves in bed while doubting himself. Is it because of his looks? If that's the case, Macaron thinks she's not a good woman. Imagawa should forget about her, but it's not that easy. Well, for an idiot like him, Dagoro needs the god board. Our lesson for today is being rejected for the second time. If a girl turns you down more than once, it's a wake-up call that no matter what you do, she'll never see you as a potential suitor. The solution? Give up already. However, Imagawa can't. If he's stubborn, he can wait three months until a year to try again. Meanwhile, Pichan pressures Ando to spill the beans while they bathe. The girl says she was happy that Imagawa confessed to her, but... But what? Pichan assumes he took her to a hotel, pushed her down, and asked her to do nasty things, but with Ando's silence and redness, she realizes she rejected him. Unacceptable. She needs to apologize. What's Kuchan say about this? Huh? She says. Wow. Great advice. Despite Pichan's persistence, Ando insists she's fine without him. On the other hand, Imagawa plans to whack-a-mole his guacamole until he forgets his sorrows. So the five digits did their best to keep their excellency happy and satisfied and… okay, that's enough. Now we go back to Ando. Pichan and Kuchan take her to a grown-up store. She must learn to do a solo before entering a duet, if you catch my drift. Ando feels threatened and uses her AK field on her Edo gods, but she can't defy a god as Pichan decreases her size. However, Twin Tails doesn't expect to see her sworn enemy, Daigoro. She immediately tells Kuchan about him. She'll never forget this perv and what he did to her at heaven school. They were just chibis then, leisurely playing at the playground. Suddenly, Daigoro lifted up Pichan's skirt, exposing her unmentionables. Until now, she hasn't avenged herself. Pichan thought Daigoro did that to Kuchan too, but no. She was his target. Not because he liked her, but because her reaction was amusing. It was a perfect god reaction. But anyway, what are they doing here? Pichan says they're supposed to buy a lotion, but what does he care? Without her noticing, Hanto got away, and off they go to catch her. Bori Magawa walks past superintendent that night. Female smell has gotten stronger in him, but the question is, to be or not to be chased? Meanwhile, Makaron is trying to cheer Imagawa up, to no avail. He keeps to himself inside his zippered wardrobe. That night, Makaron wakes up to Imagawa's fearsome eyes. He crawls out of the cabinet and says, I'll wait for three months. With that said, Imagawa has 90 days before his most awaited comeback. Life's hard when you got zero riz, and it looks like having literal gods on your side can only do so much too. But at the end of the day, the world is vast, and even Imagawa has someone who liked him for him, and not for whatever lesson the gods are shoving down his throat. All that's left is for him and Ando to be more honest with their feelings. And maybe, these 30-year-olds' health and physical education will bear fruit. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.